Welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today we are making the August mini block of the month. This is the third and final block in the mini block of the month series in 2016. We've been making it over the course of the summer and it's in these beautiful fall colors. So if you've been following along, you should have that finished up just in time to get quilted and put on your couch for fall. If you are just seeing this now, there are still kits available. So go to quiltaddictsanonymous.com and click on the mini block of the month tab. There you'll find links to all the tutorials, free downloadable patterns, and the um, kits where you can purchase this and the backing. There are not a whole lot of backings left, so if you have been following along and you want backing, make sure you go and order it now before it's sold out. Alright, this is a fun block. This one will sort of... When we put it all together, we'll help complete that look of that log cabin that we were creating in the first month. It's really just a fun block. It all kind of works together once we get it all together. And once we're done, all you'll have to do is slap some borders on and you're done. All right, we're going to start pretty simple with a four patch in the center of the block. Let's get started. So my four patch unit's laid out right here. And I'm just going to lay those right sides together, bring them over to my sewing machine, and I'm going to sew them just with a standard quarter inch stitch. Make sure I get this good lined up here. Don't want to screw it up on the last block. Now this is a great project to chain piece. And once you do that, you're just going to flip the next ones right sides together. Get your corners all squared up. And then I'm just going to lift up my press foot just a little bit, feed the next one under there, and go on and sew through making one block for this tutorial but when you're making all four you can go ahead and chain piece all of these at once it makes it go really fast so for this block I'm going to go ahead and press it so that the seam is underneath that rust fabric it's a little bit darker than that beigey caramely one so it'll have less of a shadow when this quilt is finished and put together Now, because these are on opposite sides, when I flip these right sides together, I've got my seams going in opposite directions, which means if I don't want to, I don't have to pin because these are just going to lock right in place. But if you want to, you can also put a pin right in here before you go to sew them together. So now I've got my four patch pressed and ready to sew together. I always like to uh, rearrange my back seams once I'm about halfway through, make sure my corners are together, so straight through, and we're almost done, just have to press this open. There you go, all done. Now we're going to make a few fine geese units, and to do that we're going to make them from squares. This is also called a no waste fine geese unit, or four at a time fine geese. So I have one large square in my beige background, and then I have four smaller squares in this beautiful rust. And to make sure that you have the right sizes and know which fabrics to cut, make sure you go to quiltaddictsanonymous.com to download your free instructions for this month's block. Now you want to make sure you use a chalk marking tool that you can really see on this. I like these from Fonz and Porter. Uh, they come with white and uh, regular lead ink. The white will come out, the black will not. So make sure that you're always marking on the wrong side of your fabric if you're using these. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line from corner to corner on all of these little squares. And we're going to use that as a guide when we make our flying geese units. last one here. All right. So now I'm going to arrange this so that it kind of looks more like a diamond than a square. And I'm going to put these little squares so that way they are lined up with the points are right in line with the bigger square beneath it. So now when I sew this, I'm going to sew a scant quarter and seam down both sides of this drawn line and that's going to help give us great accuracy because we're not we're sewing on the bias but it's still sewn together so there won't be all the stretching that you sometimes find with flying geese units. 
Now I'm going to set my sewing machine to sew a scant quarter inch stitch. For me that just means moving my needle one position to the right. Um, if your machine doesn't do that, instead of sewing right next to that drawn line, you can sew right on with your presser foot right on top of it. The edge of it will be right on top and you'll get the same effect. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've got it all lined up, and if you wanted to, you could pin these in place. I'm not going to. I've done a lot of these, and I've, I've sometimes done like hundreds at a time. So it really would be a big time saver if I had to pin every single one of them. So I just grab them and sort of line them up as I go, but do whatever is comfortable for you. So I'm going to sew down this line. This is also another great candidate for chain piecing. You can do all these at once when you're making all four blocks at home. As a tutorial, I'm not going to do that because I'm just doing one for this block. Need to bring this back over to the cutting board and I need to cut this block apart right on that drawn line. It's not super important that you're accurate at this stuff. You don't have to be exactly on that line, but you don't want it to be too skinny either. So make sure that you are going pretty much down the center of that block. Now it's time to press this open and if you've done it right, you're going to end up with something that looks a little bit like a heart. I'm just going to go ahead and press those rust triangles, the little ones, away from the larger beige. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And I know if you haven't done this before, this kind of looks weird and like it maybe isn't going to work out. But trust me, it is perfect when it's all done. So now I'm going to take another one of these squares and I'm going to line it up just like we did before with the point of my little square in line with the point of what is now a larger triangle. And my line is going right toward the center of this little heart. So now I'm going to sew another scant quarter inch seam down both sides of that line. Again, you could pin this if you wanted to. I'm not going to because uh, I've done a lot of them so I feel really comfortable without it but you certainly are welcome to do whatever feels most comfortable to hurt you. I'm going to flip this around, sew down the other side. Now we need to cut these apart right on that drawn line, just like before, accuracy is super important. You don't have to be exactly on it, but again, you don't want too skinny of a seam either. So now when you open this up, you can see that you have a flying geese unit. And you have four of them for every one of these units that you put together, which is why they call it four at a time flying geese unit. And there's no waste, which is why it's also called no waste flying geese units. We have one more step, uh, well two, we have to press and then we need to trim. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm just gonna press that open there. You really wanna get this good and flat. It really helps in the next step to get a nice uh, square unit. Now I need to trim this up to two and a half by four and a half inches. And I'm looking at a couple of things when I do this. First, my two and a quarter is right above where this point is of the large triangle. And I'm also making sure that where my four and a half and two and a half meet and where my two and a half meets the edge of the ruler are also where the points of my piece units meet. And that means that my points are gonna end up where they're supposed to be when it's all put together. Now, you, it may be a little difficult to see, but I'm actually maybe like a sixteenth of an inch shy at the top of this flying geese unit. That's going to be okay. Um, you won't see it. It's in the seam allowance. So if yours aren't completely perfect, that's all right. Um, if they're way off, like more than an eighth of an inch, then you're going to want to redo it. But if it's less than that, then you're okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm lining up my four and a half with the edge of the ruler is right where these lines come together. And then this is where I'm a little short, so my flying geese isn't actually right on that two and a half for that part of the wing, but it is over here. And my 45 degree line is going right on that seam line, which means that this point is going to be right at the edge as well. Oops. 
Now we have a perfectly trimmed flying geese unit. So now we have to sew this together and it really is sewing like together standard nine pads except for one thing. We need to make sure that this point matches up with this center. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick and it definitely is going to involve some pins. I know if you've followed me for a long time you know I don't really like to use pins but there's a time and a place for them and this is it. So I'm actually going to draw on this a little bit so you can see a little better. My blue pen. I draw right on that seam line and anytime you use a fine geese, it comes together and it makes a little X there. So I'm sticking my pin right in where that X comes together. Now I'm going to take a look at where it ends up on the back side. And in this case, it's not going to be in line because it is just to the right of that seam allowance. We want it to be right on that seam allowance. So I'm just going to slide that off and slide it back on. So now my pin is coming right out on top of that seam allowance. Now I find that if I try to tip this pin this way, that it gets out of alignment. So what I do is I use this as kind of an anchor and I pinch it to keep it in line. And then I take a second pin and put that in the seam allowance. Straighten that out a little bit. So now I'm gonna remove this pin and now I'm ready to sew. So I'm moving my sewing machine back to a regular quarter inch stitch. We don't need that scant quarter inch anymore. I'm going to slow down when I get to that center because I want my needle to be one needle width to the right of that X. That's how you get perfect points on flying geese units. And now I am rearranging to make sure that my corners are still in line at the end of the block. And I'm going to sew all the way down. And let's check and see how that point turned out. Oh, that turned out pretty good. We have my point is coming almost exactly in line with where this four patch comes together. If I was not happy with this, which this is close enough to where I'm calling it a good day, but if I were not happy with this, I would not have to rip the whole thing out. I would just rip from here to here, readjust, and sew again. So that's the trick to getting your points to match up where you want them to be. So now go ahead and sew the rest of this together. You want to sew it in rows and then sew your rows together to make your center block of this unit. Now we've got our center block piece and now it's time to add the log cabin strips. And this one we're going counterclockwise. Um, the last one we went clockwise, so just make a note of that. So in order to get your instructions where you can see how all this is laid out and your cutting instructions, just go to quiltaddisonomics.com to get all that. So this part should be pretty easy. It's basically everything we've already did in the first block. Just we're only doing one round of them. Go ahead and press that up. If any of your points were off and you wanted to fix those, now is the time to do it. Again, you don't have to rip everything, just a little bit from on the sides of the point you want to fix. In this case, I'm a little shy on this one, but I'm good with that. All right, we've got our next side. This box will be done before we knew it. I like to kind of hold my hand behind the presser foot. It, I'm not pulling anything, I'm just kind of guiding it. It helps me keep everything nice and straight when I'm working on these longer seams. And we are back to the iron. Press that up again. I always like to lay everything back out because then that just makes it a little easier for me to make sure that I'm getting everything where it's supposed to be. Otherwise it's just way too easy for me to accidentally sew something to the wrong side of the block.
here it is, the last strip of our final block of the mini block of the month. We just have to press this last one and then we're done. Well, this is it. This is your August block of the month for the mini block of the month series 2016 from Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Make sure you go to the website where you can click on the block of the month tab. You'll see all the block of the months that are available. Click on the mini and you'll be able to find all the tutorials and free pattern downloads for this quilt. There are also our kits available if you are just finding this now or you've been making it and you really just love this fabric and need to have it in this colorway. Those are available as well. There are instructions on how to assemble all the blocks we made so that you can have your completed quilt top. At this point it's just piecing those 16 blocks together and adding a couple of quick borders. Really simple. So make sure you download your free printable instructions to get that. And I'd love to see pictures of your finished quilts. Make sure to post them to facebook.com backslash quilt addicts anonymous so that we all can see your beautiful work. Thanks so much for following along and happy quilting.